In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at how you would go about using the limit definition to find the derivative. This is something that is done early on uh, before they show you any shortcut tricks uh, like power rule or chain rule or anything like that for finding the derivative. They first introduce you into this formal limit definition of a derivative. So we'll go through that definition and then do one example worked out and it'll be a little more challenging example as opposed to um, an easier function. Okay, so our definition of a derivative. It says the derivative of f at x is given by f prime of x, all right, is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x, provided that the limit exists. Okay, now um, in a pre-calc course, you should have worked with this, maybe not with the delta x and delta x right here, maybe it was um, x plus h and an h right there, but you should recognize this as the difference quotient. Okay, so now we're just going to take the limit as delta x approaches zero of this difference quotient. All right, this is the formal limit definition of a derivative where it comes from. You can calculate derivatives using this formal limit um, definition. All right, it does make for finding the derivative a longer process. All right, but um, especially a lot of Calc 1 um, professors at college want you to be able to do at least one or two um, derivatives showing them all of the algebra that goes behind this. All right, so that's what we're doing this example for. Okay, so let's suppose that um, the directions were very, very explicit and said using the limit definition find the derivative. So you've got to show all that algebra uh, involved with using that limit definition in order to get credit for calculating your derivative. All right, now, if this was a uh, just an ordinary polynomial function, it wouldn't be too bad. All right, so I thought I would pick one that most students don't like. Well, uh, it's still a little function, but it's just a little rational function here. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the derivative using that limit definition. So I'm going to start out, and I'm going to tell the person, okay, I'm calculating my derivative. So f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero. All right, I'm going to go ahead and write the formal definition just so we have something to look at here. So f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Okay, now I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches zero, and I'm going to start working out this formula. This formula says to take x plus delta x and plug it into the function every place that there is an x. Then it says subtract the entire function and divide by delta x. So I'm going to have a 1 over x plus delta x plus 3 minus the function itself, which is 1 over x plus 3 all over delta x. All right, now at this point, I should look at this and see a complex fraction. I've got a fraction here minus another fraction. That's all in the numerator of another fraction. All right, your algebraic technique for simplifying a complex fraction is to multiply through by the least common denominator. So I'm going to look at all my denominators. In this fraction here, I've got an x plus delta x plus 3. In this denominator, I've got x plus 3, and if I treated this denominator as a fraction, delta x over 1, my denominator here would be 1. So by looking at all of those, I can come up with my least common denominator being x plus delta x plus 3 times that x plus 3. So that is my least common denominator. Now I'm going to multiply the numerator by that and multiply the denominator by that. So x plus delta x plus 3 times that x plus 3. And I'm going to multiply this denominator by that as well. So x plus delta x plus 3 and x plus 3. All right. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to eliminate those two fractions. So by multiplying through by my least common denominator, I can eliminate them. I'm going to distribute my least common denominator to each one of those things, which will then allow me to eliminate that fraction. So in my next line, I'm going to have the limit as delta x approaches 0. When I distribute this times this fraction, the x plus delta x plus 3 is going to cross out, leaving me with just the x plus 3. All right, and then it's going to be minus the quantity 
than I get when I multiply here. So I'm going to take this, distribute it to this fraction. The x plus 1's will cross out, leaving me with this quantity. So x plus delta x plus 3. And then all over this entire denominator, not going to multiply anything out or anything. I'm just going to write it down. So delta x, x plus delta x plus the 3. And then the x plus the 3. All right, now, I might make a special note here, minus the quantity, and I put that set of parentheses in there. All right, if this here says I am subtracting this entire quantity, when I multiply it and I end up with multiple things over there, I've got to make sure that I understand that it's minus everything that comes after it. So to do that, I need to put a set of parentheses around that. Okay, now I'm going to go through and do some simplifying. First of all, I'm going to go through and change all those signs on that. So the limit as delta x approaches 0, x plus 3. Now change my signs. Minus x, minus delta x, minus 3 from that numerator right there. And then all over the delta x, x plus delta x plus 3 times that x plus 3. All right, in my numerator, I've got an x and a minus x. So I'm going to get those two, make those go away. I also have a 3 and a minus 3, so those two are going to go away. And then I also have a delta x here and a delta x here. There's a minus in front of it, so I can't forget there's a little minus 1 right there. But my delta x's are also going to cross out. So that's going to leave me with the limit as delta x approaches 0. All right, almost everything got crossed out in that numerator except for a negative 1. And in my denominator, I've got an x plus delta x plus a 3 and an x plus a 3. Okay, now I have simplified down to there, and I can now do a direct substitution. Delta x approaches 0, so I'm going to replace delta x with a 0. All right, once I do that direct substitution, then my limit notation goes away. So then I would have a negative 1 over an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 and if you wanted to do a little more simplifying there you could write it as a binomial squared so negative 1 over x plus 3 quantity squared okay so um, let's do a little conclusion here so therefore f prime of x is equal to negative 1 over x plus 3 quantity squared all right, now I will, I will agree with anybody that says that is the long way to find that derivative because once you've learned the quotient rule or a variety of other rules, all right, then it's much quicker to do it that way. All right, the purpose of this video was for um, any student that has a professor that requires them to be able to solve, um, find that derivative using that formal limit definition. So um, definitely, thanks for watching. Um, and if the videos are helping, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.